Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. SNS 40. Man, we made it to 40 episodes. Can't believe it's already been this many, man. It's been it's been a fun year for me. SNS 40. I hope that this continues. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And as long as you guys enjoy watching this format, I'll keep doing them. And I, I believe everybody seems to be enjoying it. SNS has uh, become a, a nice, fun video that I look forward to making every week, actually. It's a good time for me to throw in viewer appreciation mail, new tools, um, shenanigans going on around the shop. I mean, just all kind of stuff. That's why I like it, man. We can kind of throw a lot of different things in there for you and, and uh, have a good time and sit back and enjoy watching. So this week... I've decided I'm going to make two parts to SNS 40. We'll have a part one and part two. Part one is going to be viewer appreciation mail. I've actually got quite a bit this week, man. We've got four different packages that showed up. Lots of really cool stuff from a lot of great guys. And so we're going to go into all those. Um, we've also got some new tool acquisitions that I want to show you. Some really nice stuff. Just a couple things. And we'll pull those over here and check them out. I want to share that with you. I've also, I'm also going to uh, show you an indicator that I have. And this is in response to Tom Lipton over at Oxtool. In his uh, last meatloaf, he kind of called me out on a, he, uh, he received a nice indicator. So he wanted to see what I got. So let's, uh, we'll pull one of mine out and see what we got, okay? Compare. <laughs> and, uh, Part one's also gonna include a little bit of shop improvement that I've done around here. I'm gonna show you my mag drill. Over on the, the uh, welding table, I wanted to get my little marble shear bolted down, so we pulled the mag drill out, used that. And I also made another trip from my old shop and gathered up more materials and tools and all kind of little things and, and brought down here and I've been trying to uh, stash them away and go through things that kind of stuff so I, I gave you a little peek at that so that's going to be part one and so part two I went ahead and got the coolant pump reinstalled on the Monarch lathe and I believe everything went well for me had uh, had one little hiccup there in the middle that we had to contend with but I believe we not we got her knocked out so a lot of video to share with you and I haven't been able to uh, spend any time making some other machining videos for you here lately you know the past two weeks so I've got plenty of video to share with you so we're gonna go ahead and uh, like I said second part will we'll just probably be about the uh, reinstallation of the coolant pump over on the Monarch and testing it out and seeing how it works and if I have anything else I can think of to throw in there for you I'll, I'll sure do it and so I think that's going to be about it this week, guys. Um, I wanted to give a quick little shout out too to John Mills, Double Boost. John, I want you to know that I have not forgot about you, buddy. I promised you an indicator set a while back. I still have it, and I've got a couple other things for you too. I just have not been able to make it down to the post office and get that stuff mailed out to you. So I haven't forgot about you, and I, I will be sending you a package as soon as I can, okay? I just wanted John to know that. I haven't forgot about him. So, all right, guys, I think that's going to be about it. We'll go ahead and get to our view appreciation mail and check out some goodies and all kinds of cool stuff. So, hope you enjoy. And thank you, everybody, for all the continued support. And thank you to all my new subscribers. I hope you, I hope you enjoy. All right. So, our first package comes to us from Paul Compton. And he is from Harpenden, England. And Paul Compton also has a channel. You can check him out. Got all kind of cool stuff, motorcycle stuff going on over there. Machine work, hobby work. And Paul's already sent me a couple packages in the past. And he put together another, <laughs> another package for me. So got all kind of cool stuff in here. And so the first thing is... He says he's been playing with a 3D printer at work, making lots of test prints, so I thought I'd try some GoPro accessories. Surface finish on the handle isn't that good, but it's quite functional. I know how, I know what setting needed change, needed change to improve it. 
It's printed in PLA, a biodegradable plastic derived from plant starch. And that's this guy right here. Pretty neat. This is the first time I've ever actually had anything in my hands that was done on a 3D printer. He's got the end machine like the, or you know, cut like uh, the GoPro style tongue and groove system. You put the nut on this side and you have your stud that goes through your bolt. Very cool. So we got us a cool little handle that we can attach to one of the cameras whenever I want to uh, make some, you know, self shots, you know, walking around or whatever. So cool deal, Paul. Thank you. All right. We've also got a couple of uh, tubes of Lanogard right here. We've got two of them. And what he says about Lanogard is he said you complain from time to time about surface rust problems and this may be the answer particularly for measuring tools uh, yes I do have a rusting problem and that's just because we have high humidity here where I live in Florida a little goes a long way use a dab on a finger and rub over the surface to be protected let me know how it works in your climate I think James Kilroy has a similar problem so peace Please pass along the second pot to him. So, James, you get one. So, uh, next time we do some exchanges, I'll, I'll send you one of these Lano guards. And it has the look of grease. Got, got a little different smell to it. So, another, another cool thing to try for the, uh, for the rusting problems. All right. There's... Uh, there's also a couple more things in here that I'll share with you. Uh, he threw some of these pieces of rubber tubing in here also. He says that you know they make good isolation mounts for different things. I might be able to adapt this in the camera mount system somehow. So he cut me four pieces of those. And he also sent me, you know recently I told you I bought an external hard drive for the computer here. That's helped out tremendously. So he sent me another thing here that I can use for my uh, video storage. That's this guy right here. <laughs> Backup data entry. <laughs> Look at that guy, man. That is, that's a floppy disk for you. Whenever I was a kid in elementary school, I actually remember these things. And th this is what I always remember as a floppy disk. And then I guess shortly after this is when they went to the little smaller, uh, more compact uh, floppy disk, they called them. I, th I thought they were a hard disk, but anyway, so <laughs> he, he was having a little fun with me. And, and all the guys on the channel were having this huge discussion about how, how these days it's so ridiculous how cheap you can buy so much storage these days and how back in the days of things like this this would cost so much money and you have such little storage <laughs> so I guess that's his date right there I'm, I'm assuming 3-23-1984 that's pretty cool I haven't seen one of those since I was a little kid so that was that was <laughs> that was a good laugh ball man all right, we've also got a couple more things here, and this is something that Paul had had emailed me about. And what this is is uh, there's a couple books here called uh, the Harry Dieters, and I, I believe these guys are from from his area, his his country, and they've had success with you know losing a lot of weight by healthy cooking and things like that. And so here's here's the other book right here. So this will be. This will be pretty cool to look through and, and see what kind of recipes we can find. You know, I've always been a big person, always have, even whenever I, I was in shape. I, I actually used to be in really good shape back in the, you know, the 2000s. I, I went to the gym and worked out every single day and ran, and I had lost a lot of weight. And the, the time come where I just kind of fell out of it, got tired of it, and I started gaining weight. And it's tough, man. It's tough to maintain, and, and you've got to be dedicated. It's, it's like a lifestyle change when you're somebody that's my size that 
you want to lose a bunch of weight and stay stay off of it. So, you know, I'm, I'm guilty as most people with what I eat, but I don't think that I go overboard. I don't eat a whole lot of sweets and, uh, you know, junk food and that kind of stuff. But whenever I eat a hearty meal, it's a nice hearty meal. But anyway, so he wanted me to have these books and it, it might be able to help me out. And I'm sure it will if I if I go by some of these recipes. So this will be a good read. I can't wait to look through there and maybe me and Elena can find some good recipes in here that we can we can uh, cook for us for dinner. So thank you, Paul. Very nice package. Some really cool stuff. I especially really like this little handle, man. That's that's pretty neat. And I've got an idea for later making something like this that's longer. Uh, I think guys call it a boom mount that you attach your GoPro on the end and you know, like you're out riding a boat or, or anything like that, you know, you can hold it and have your camera like way out here, you know, looking out. So that's really cool. That, that'll, that'll come in handy too, man. So again, thank you very much, Paul. I really appreciate it, okay? All right, our second item. This comes to us from James Kilroy over in Vicksburg, Mississippi. I think a lot of you guys know James by now. And if you don't, check him out on YouTube. He's got a channel called James Kilroy. Does all kind of cool projects. And got a big old K&T mill and a nice big shaper. He's always, he's always got some interesting projects going on. James and I have become pretty good friends. And he is, uh, he's been so kind enough to send me some more goodies here. And it says Niagara Cutter on the box and what we got here is two milling cutters and I actually I'm, I don't think I have any of this style right here but what it, what you got is a right and a left hand so I'll, I'll go ahead and unwrap this one real quick it's still in the paper here and I'm assuming that James found these on eBay. I always call him the eBay king because he's always out there finding those those awesome deals on cutters on eBay. So so he sent me this pair of cutters and they are uh, three and a half inches in diameter and the width is 400 thousandths the one inch arbor. It's a right hand and a left hand so you could actually stack them you could stack them like that on your arbor and you have a right and a left hand cut or you can just use one at a time if you want to so you know a 400 thousandths cutter isn't isn't uh, I don't believe it's real common but it's still a milling cutter and you can use it for lots of different jobs you know you, you can take a, a cut with something like that and step it over and keep going with it so I think that would be a pretty interesting setup right there Having both of those stacked and use them looks pretty aggressive, don't it? <laughs> looks like a big tractor tire when they're stacked together. So anyway, I want to thank James for the K and T love, as he likes to call it. They will go in the stash of all the other cutters, and I hope one day that I get to use them. So I appreciate you sending them to me, James. All right, our next gift here comes to us from Mike Clayton. And he is from Christchurch, New Zealand. Another package from New Zealand. This is great, man. He's, he's, he's uh, sent me a nice, useful tool for the shop here. We'll go ahead and open her up and let you see what it is. Also got a little note here. So we've got a coax indicator. Now I actually do have a coax indicator already and I've used it showed you in my videos and it's basically the same thing as this one here all right and if you look closely you can kind of see that we do have one issue to deal with and that's this piece here this joint that the rods go into you can see that it's bent a little bit and that is the same exact problem that I had on my coax indicator and mine had actually broke right there where it, where it bolts in there at the bottom. Mine had snapped off. So actually it was me and my dad 
had actually brazed that back together and, and dressed it and fit it back in there, but it never was perfect. It was still a little off, a little crooked, didn't fit exactly. But it's always worked and I've used it. So what I'd like to do is, is see if I can't straighten this in here and, and get it work, you know, lined up like it's supposed to be. And we'll put this coax indicator to use also. It does include all of the different feeler rods for the inside and outside. Um, there's your, that's the arm that goes to the side so you can dog it off. And it does come with the spring loaded center there for lining up punch marks and things like that. So very nice tool, Mike. Thank you very much for sending it to me. This is a very useful tool to have in the shop and I'm gonna appreciate having this one also, man. So thanks again. Uh, before I cut you off, he did write me a little short note here. And uh, he said, Adam, here's the item I was talking about. Hope it's useful. It might save you having to go looking for your mirror <laughs> and having to bend your neck around the odd angles. All the best to you, Atlanta, and not forgetting Stella. Give her a pat for me. We'll make sure we give Stella a pat for you, man. <laughs> Thanks again. Okay, our last uh, view appreciation box to go in. This comes to us from Ryan Washala. He's from Downs, Illinois. He sent a nice little box of goodies here. I'll pull some of them over. We got this guy here. Nice little Armstrong tool holder. We've got some end mills. Still in good shape. That's an inch and a quarter right there. This looks like a one inch. It's an inch and an eighth, but it looks like it's been ground a couple times. So we got a couple end mills here. And we got this. Now this is very interesting. It's an Armstrong tool, and it's the number S-52. I don't have one like this. And I actually I don't think I've ever seen one until, until Ryan had sent this one to me. So I haven't done any research on this, so the guys that might know a little more about it, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe what this is, is like one of those gooseneck spring tools. You put your tool bit in here, all right, so you got a screw down here at the bottom. You can put your tool in here and tighten it up any position that you want to. I believe it does hold a, a 5 16 square tool bit. And I've seen guys like uh, Tom, he, he's made one that has the same configuration to it. And it's great for machining things like a, a large radius, things like that where you experience a lot of chatter in your machining. A uh, tool like this helps uh, eliminate the chatter. But what I think is going on here is that if you don't want to use it for the anti-chatter setup, you can tighten up this, this screw down here. And on the back, you've got three divots that's drilled into it so that that will screw into that divot. And you can snug it up. There's a little hole in this where you can put a rod in there and just kind of give it a little tension. So this is supports the bottom of it and keeps it from trying to uh, you know, shake that kind of thing so we'll have to try this thing out man never used one before said I've never had one so we're gonna have to give this a shot and and see what kind of results we get out of it I do like the Armstrong stuff and I've actually got a cabinet slap full of Armstrong tools man I mean I've got a pile of them a lot of stuff that my dad had collected my granddad brought home uh, some of the big ones you know down to the small ones and I've even got a bunch of great big lantern tool posts also. <laughs> so uh, we used to have a big shaper at my old shop, and I think that's what a lot of those bigger tools were used on. So anyway, that's pretty cool right there. Got a box of cards. We'll go into that in a sec. And then he also sent me this. This is a calendar that he made himself, and it's full of pictures of different things that he has you know, his own machine work, you know, his the pictures that he has taken. A lot of really cool pictures in here. And 
I can't remember who it, he sent one of these to somebody else now, and I can't remember who it was, but I know somebody else had, had opened this up and, and shown the calendar that he made. So a lot of a lot of cool pictures. That's where he was doing. Looks like he was grinding his jaws. Looks like a four jaw chuck. There's some chip control there. Some indicating using a central, uh, I believe, like a back plunge style indicator. A drill. So very cool, man. Nice calendar. We'll we'll hang it up out here in the shop. Probably over here by my by my cabinet. All right, so two more items that he sent right here. Now these are these are really <laughs> these are really awesome. I want you to check that out. <laughs> I've never seen one of these before until he sent it to me. A stare at belt buckle. <laughs> It says stare at American made on the back of it right there. And on the front, stare at made in USA. Very cool. That's uh that's just gonna be something really cool to have around here on the shelf, you know, to kind of show off to people when they come in. Uh I don't wear a big belt buckle like this, and I don't think that I want to. So I, I think this would be a lot better suited to have, you know, up here on my shelf so that people can see it because that's really neat. Uh, I'd like to know when they actually had had these things made. I, I imagine they were, they were something that they handed out, you know, as like a promotional item. So I imagine it's got a little bit of age to it, but you never know. It even says right there, made in USA, American made. Very cool. That's a that's a really cool gift, Ryan. <laughs> but we got one more too. This is something that uh, I've always wanted. I've never bought myself. But you got another little steer item right here, and I believe what this is is a money clip. That's what it looks like to me is a money clip. And it's got 1880, 1955 on there. So I'm assuming that was their, uh, they made this in 1955. Probably also to hand out as a little promotional item to customers. So very, very cool, man. Of course, I've never seen one of these either. <laughs> so I guess Ryan knows that I'm a Sterrett Tool Junkie. As most of you probably know by now, I love Sterrett Tools. So this is great, man. I, even this, I, I don't think that I'll end up using this because I don't want to put any wear on it, you know, and have it down in my pocket and start getting scratched up and, and scratch the paint off and things like that. So we may just um, keep this as a little memento and put it up here on my little shelf and, and I'll see it every time I come in my shop. So lots of really cool stuff, Ryan. Really appreciate it. Thank you for sending them to me. You, kind of outdid yourself on these uh these little stare things right here man very cool so thank you very much so here's my new tools that i told you that i got this week i got a co-worker at uh at work his dad actually passed away this year back in the summertime and he and his siblings have been going through his his garage he's, he's got a workshop and they've been going through trying to, uh, you know, basically coming out of the state. And he told me that he found some steric tools there. And he knows that I'm a steric junkie. So he, uh, he grabbed these and brought them home with him. And along with some other items and asked would I be interested in them. And I told him, sure, I would love to have them. So me and him worked out a little deal. And... <clears throat> These were, the, there was some other stuff, but these, these were like, you know, the hot ticket items. So, um, the first one, you guys probably all recognize. Got a stare at back plunge indicator, uh, a number 196. And it does work good. It's in good shape. Nothing wrong with it at all. And down there in the box, there's a, there's a little 
envelope there that's got I believe it's two more of these tips one of them is like a big button tip I believe there's two button tips in that bag in there so so this was the this was the first thing nice little back plunge indicator it says wholesale tools on it all right so we got the back plunge indicator and then we also got this this is really cool here They have a brand new, I don't think it's ever been used, one of your uh, Steric Tremels. And this is a, I think it's a, called a, it's a nine inch, if I remember correctly. I looked it up a while back whenever he had talked to me about it. And uh, I didn't look it up before I brought it out and showed it to you, but. C251A is the uh, Steric part number if you want to check that out. But it's still got the the oil on it from Sterrett. It's actually kind of dried up. Got the this beam has a satin chrome finish on it. But it it appears to be new, never used. Well, let's see. That's uh yeah, number C dash two fifty one. Like I said, I believe this is called a nine inch trammel. All right, you got some the additional attachments here. The different feelers. You got two of the points and you got two two that have the little bend on it. So, that'll make a nice addition to the box right there, man. I've actually got one already. It was my dad's, but his my dad's is is a I, I don't know what model it is because I didn't look at it, but it's a lot bigger than this one here. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I was kind of excited about about getting these, and and I was I was glad that that uh, he thought about me whenever he was going through his dad's stuff. So there you go. All right. So and Tom's last meatloaf, he received a new indicator, and called me out. Wanted to see if I had one bigger. You know, me and Tom's always had this friendly little thing going on, and uh, he he calls it the big tool slap down. <laughs> and it's always just been a. It's not that we try to. I think after a while we did start messing with each other, but in the beginning it was just kind of funny about. Hey, I think I got one that's a little bit bigger than that. <laughs> and it started like with the, I believe it was the tap wrenches that I'd shown in a video, and some other things. You know, it's just all for fun guys that's all it is we love having fun and that's what these videos are about too you know having fun so he received a nice Ames indicator and by the way all the shenanigans that was going on over there you guys were kind of throwing them off saying that no no it was James that had the Ames indicator well I have a Ames indicator also and it was my dad's and I actually sent it to Long Island Indicator Service to have repaired. And I showed that in a video. I guess you guys must have forgot about it. Let me go grab it real quick and I'll show you. Okay, so this is for the guys that forgot that I had an Ames Indicator. That's that one right there. Back plunge indicator. This was my dad's very first indicator. It was a complete set, and it was my granddad had bought it for him and give it to him whenever he started machining when he was 18. So I had Long Island refurbish this. They knew they put a new crystal on it, and I haven't even used it yet. So maybe one of these days we'll pull it over here to the mill or something and put it to some use. So, all right. So that's not what this part is about really, though. But I wanted to kind of refresh some of you guys on that. So this indicator that Tom got is an Ames, and he measured it. And I want to say he said it was three and a half inches, three and three quarter, something like that. It's got about a four inch travel on it. Uh, it is a metric indicator, so I don't I don't recall what the total reading was on it. But it was, he says about four inch travel. All right, so I dug around, and this is the biggest indicator that I have. This is a compact, and. I actually acquired this one this past summer in, in a nice little tool trade. It needs a little bit of repair, but it does work. But it's missing the, the piece on the top there. 
and it's also missing the tip and the crystal is real dirty and I know that it needs to be gone into so let's see how big this one is right here I'm gonna call it three and a quarter that measures 3.222 right there so let's just say three and a quarter that's your bezel diameter three and a quarter but so evidently that's uh, that's smaller than Tom's and it's not as long so I think he got me there Tom you got a you got a bigger indicator than I do but I do have something else that's close and if you guys were watching my videos in the past you might have seen where he sent me this stare it four inch travel indicator nice piece right there me and him did a little horse trading I believe I sent him a, a 12 inch machinist level and traded him for this but so this is the closest thing that I have as far as the reach that the new indicator you have Tom you know so this is a four inch travel stare it dial indicator right here so we got you real close to the to the uh, length of travel but as far as the the size of it the diameter I think you got me beat so score one for Tom huh well I still got a couple more tricks man and we might have to pull a couple more things out of the magic workbench over here and let you see and see if I can come back with a with a rebuttal <laughs> so anyway there you go there's a bomb's biggest indicator right there nice compact by the way I, I believe Long Island repairs they actually sell compact brand so I want to I'm gonna send them a couple pictures of this one day and see if they can uh, get this one fixed up for me that would be a nice indicator to have around the shop hey bonus video we always like that right so this is a job I was doing at work we had, I had a couple steel flanges that I had to drill and tap for 2 inch MPT 2 inch pipe thread so I decided to use the board mill for this job here and as you can see I'm using the board mill I'm drilling the hole here got it clamped up to two of my angle angle plates but what I decided to do was Instead of trying to use a lathe to uh, do this, I just wanted to use a tap. I had to end up building an adapter to hold the two inch tap. And it's something that I wanted to try. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work or not. So here's the boring bar, just getting the board to size. Uh, I believe the tap size was 2.202, something like that, if I recall right. So there it is, boring at the size. And this next clip, this is the adapter that I made. I used a piece of 3 inch 1045 chrome rod. There's a tap installed. I used two set screws to hold to drive it on the square. I built it to fit an inch and a quarter end mill holder, and the big one above it is one I wanted to use, but it's bent. That's what I'm showing you there. It's just, it's bent, won't work. So I had to use my inch and a quarter to uh, five more taper adapter. So here it is, set up ready to try I've never done this before I wasn't sure if it was gonna work I was I was thinking it was gonna twist that shank right on off in that end mill holder I believe I was running about 16 rpm had it in in very low gear getting rolled up and just running it in by hand the the spindle on this works just like a regular knee mill and you can move it in and out and once the tap starts cutting it pulls itself into the part there so it's moving right along it's doing its thing sorry about the shaky cam guys you know I filmed that with my iPhone I'm trying to work the controls and oil it at the same time and, and get some video for you to see but it actually worked out man it, it cut the hole I mean it tapped it and I kept expecting that little inch and a quarter shank to snap off because of the pressure but it didn't it, it it did it like a trooper man it did its job I'm just <laughs> you see how much oil I'm using there I'm just wanting to make sure that that tap has got plenty of oil on it 
I've got plenty of that, so I'm not worried about how much I use. But it's doing a good job, man. It's it's pulling itself in there and it's cutting it, and the machine's taking it. I never heard any binding or anything. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm looking behind it just, just to look at it and make sure everything was going all right. Put more oil on it and keep on going. I was trying to get down to about a third of the tap left so I could check the the, uh, the fitting that's got a screw in there and make sure that it's going to fit right. But I checked it and I needed to go a little bit further with it. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm going back into it. I'm going a little bit further. And typically, you you leave about, I don't know, five, maybe four or five threads, anywhere between four and six threads maybe, and it'll, it'll cut usually about the right depth that you need. So coming back out, and here it is tapped, and I've got the fitting, and I'm going to screw it in by hand just to check the fit, and it worked. <laughs> So there you go, man. The uh, shop built two inch MPT adapter. Hey guys, Adam and Melina here showing y'all the new insert Mike Chipio sent me. I'm turning a 1045 steel, taking 1 8 depth of a cut and feeding 15 thousandths per revolution. Ooh, look at her go. Isn't she sexy? Losing all those extra pounds. To become a 15 thousandths per revolution. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs>